Welcome friends to this very first lecture for the course Literary Theory and Literary Criticism. I am your instructor Professor Aisha Iqbal Veshamohan um, and we will be meeting regularly for this course that you are going to certificate for. Um, before we go any further into this uh, course, I just wanted to give you a very good introduction to the course. What does this course entail? Well, uh, this course basically is meant for as the website suggests for people who of a certain age who have crossed certain uh, level and it is meant for everyone. So, it is open basically to people who have uh, registered for the course. A background to uh, literature is uh, uh, desirable, but not absolutely necessary. So, uh, what I mean is that even if you come from another discipline which is not literature based, you are welcome to this course. I hope you would not find it too difficult. We will try to make the course as accessible as possible. So, um, this course will be taught by me and uh, also by Dr. Vimal Mohan John, who is the co-instructor for this. Now, what does this course entail? What are the key components? I am very sure that most of you have already gone through the website of NPTEL and you know um, uh, what are the essential ingredients of this course. But I also thought that uh, um, in order to uh, take you Father, in this course, it is essential to have a good uh, and in-depth understanding of what this course entails. So, um, the uh, basic idea to introduce this course was that we realized that the students of literature today, uh, they are confronted with an array of theories and these theories deal with uh, a variety of domains. I mean, you have textuality, you have language, you have genre based studies, you have uh, the reading process and uh, various socio and political and also cultural contexts. Um, we also look at gender and psychology of a, a character, reception of a text, the emotional effect on the readers and so on. So, uh, we uh, thought it desirable to have a course which gives you an overview of key theories. Contemporary theories, yes, 20th century theories of course, but uh, um, we would commence the course by harking back to the times of the greatest western thinkers. Um, let me also tell you at this point that this is a course in Western literary theory and Western literary criticism. So, coming back to my earlier point, uh, we are going back to the times of the greatest Western thinkers, Plato, Aristotle, Longinus, Horace, Kant and Hegel, Schiller, Freud, um, also Coleridge, Wordsworth, Pope, Dryden and very recent theories as well. So, the course is designed to facilitate the process of uh, making theories accessible to students by offering students basic yet essential information on the ma major western theories, theorists, the key thinkers and their seminal works. Now, let me give you an overview uh, of uh, what are going to be the major uh, topics of discussion here. So, for starters, you will gain familiarity with some key concepts in literary theory and literary criticism. Um, for instance, allegory illusion, irony, defamiliarization, carnival, bricolage, 
postmodernism and its features, pastiche, simulation and so on. Uh, we will also try to talk about what is culture and uh, I am very sure that most of you are familiar with Raymond Williams and culture, his theories of culture and uh, <coughs> Raymond Williams seminal work culture and society uh, in which he attempts to theorize culture as a whole way of life and uh, here he interprets some key words such as industry, democracy, class, art, literature and argued how meanings change with the passage of time. This is important that very often we find uh, a word in literature meant something at the beginning and uh, during the course of time it uh, acquires some other meaning. Uh, Going back to Raymond Williams in, in his book The Long Revolution, Williams famously distinguishes between culture with a capital C and culture with a lower case C. Capital C lower case C. And uh, um, the, uh, for uh, uh, Williams, the capital C culture is high culture, which is a sum total of civilization's greatest moral and aesthetic achievements um, as seen in, uh, in the works of F. R. Lewis and Matthew Arnold before him. So, um, for Williams, the obvious agenda of having culture is to maintain the distinction between high bro and low bro. In other words, to maintain social class. Mm, this is something that we will be doing in uh, greater detail and analyze it further when we do the course um, on key concepts in liter uh, literary theory and literary criticism. Now, uh, Following that, we will be doing classical theory. Now, what is classical theory? So, um, we will be looking at Greek and Roman models of literary criticism with an emphasis on classical qualities. We will be focusing on the literary criticism of thinkers such as Plato, Aristotle, Horace and Longinus and we will be looking at theories of drama, poetry and style. The course will also look at neoclassical theory uh, which includes early modern and enlightenment think, uh, thinkers and writers such as Philip Sidney, Dryden, Pope, Samuel Johnson, Edison and Locke. Um, we will be also considering Horace's Ars Poetica and Longinus's concepts of or concept of sublimity. Uh, the next topic would be romanticism. We, uh, to begin with, we will look at early 19th century romanticism um, uh, with particular reference to French and German romanticism where uh, the key writers are Schiller and German de Stel, also Immanuel Kant and Hegel. So, uh, we will also look at Kant's critique of judgment. This will be followed by um, an in-depth study of English and American Romanticism. The key writers there uh, are of course uh, William Wordsworth, Coleridge um, and in America we have Emerson and also Edgar Allan Poe. We look at the concepts of poetic diction, fancy and imagination and we will also understand the critical significance of preface to lyrical ballads and biographia literaria. So, um, just to give an understanding of this movement, what is romanticism? So, I am sure most of you know what is romanticism. It is a literary, artistic and philosophical movement that originated in Europe in the 18th century 
and lasted until the mid 19th century. Romanticism is characterized chiefly by a reaction against enlightenment and neoclassicism with their stress on reason, rationality, order, balance, etc. Romanticism on the other hand emphasized the individual, the subject, the spontaneous, often the visionary, the mystical um, uh, and also the imaginative. Among the characteristic uh, attitudes of romanticism were a deep sense of the beauty of nature, a general exaltation of emotion over reason and of the senses over intellect. And romanticism was also preoccupied with the genius, the hero and a view of the artist as a supremely individual creator. The movement included an interest in folk culture, national and ethnic cultural origins and the medieval era. Romanticists also showed interest in the mysterious, the occult and the exotic, for example, uh, Coleridge's Kubla Khan. Uh, we must also note that the first phase of the Romantic movement in Germany was marked by innovations in both content and literary style and by a preoccupation with the mystical, the subconscious and the supernatural. So, this in short is what we are going to do in the Romanticism. We will also move on to late 19th century criticism after that, uh, where the defining theories were that of realism and naturalism and the key theorists are Emil Zola, Henry James. We will also look at symbolism and aestheticism in detail with particular reference to um, Charles Baudelaire and also Oscar Wilde. We will understand what is the meaning of art for art's sake and also touch upon Arnold and his touchstone method. T. S. Eliot is also one of the key writers of this time and we will understand his theories of objective correlative, dissociation of sensibility and impersonality of art. Uh, we will then move on to 20th century criticism with a specific reference to formalism and new criticism. Archetypal criticism is also going to be one major area of discussion. Uh, I am sure you know that this is a form of literary criticism that is concerned with the analysis of the original patterns for themes, motives and characters in poetry and prose. Uh, this approach to literature is based on the idea that narratives are structured according to an archetype um, or archetypal model and plot and character are important in so far as they allude to a traditional plot or uh, to uh, or figure or to patterns that have recurred with wide implications in history. Uh, so, what is an archetype you may ask? So, an archetype is a primordial image, character or pattern of circumstances uh, that recurs throughout literature enough to be considered universal. The term was adopted by literary critics from the writings of the psychologist Carl Jung who formulated the theory of the collective unconscious. For Jung, the varieties of human experience have somehow been genetically coded and transferred to successive generations. Some of the very common examples of archetypal objects are and also all archetypal creatures are the olive branches, the snake, whale, the eagle, the vulture and all these are archetypal symbols. Mm. A con common example is the theme of initiation the passage from innocence to experience and the quest motif. At this point, let me draw your attention to this seminal book, um, The Golden Bough by James Fraser. And let us see 
what Fraser tells us about archetype. A useful clue to the original nature of a god or goddess is often furnished by the season at which his or her festival is celebrated. Thus, if the festival falls at the new or the full moon, there is a certain presumption that the deity thus honored either is the moon or at least has lunar affinities. If the festival is held at the winter or summer solstice, we naturally surmise that the god is the sun or at all events that he stands in some close relation to that luminary. Again, if the festival coincides with the time of sowing or harvest, we are inclined to infer that the divinity is an embodiment of the earth or of the corn. These presumptions or inferences taken by themselves are by no means con uh, conclusive, but if they happen to be confirmed by other indications, the evidence may be regarded as fairly strong. Now, what is being discussed here? The idea of seasons, the universal archetype, the universal pattern of seasons. So, what is being described here or what is uh, Fraser trying to tell us here? The universal pattern of festivals and seasons. And uh, those of us who are, uh, who are interested in understanding these kinds of um, theories, they will understand, uh, they will appreciate that uh, uh, there are archetypes that exist all around us. So, this theory will give you a good indication to uh, understand some of the archetypes that exist universally. The key uh, writers that we will be focusing would be Northrop Frye and Anatomy of Criticism, uh, Joseph Campbell, the hero and his uh, the hero with a thousand faces and also Botkin and his archetypal patterns in poetry. We will look at structuralism and start with um, the theories of uh, Ferdinand de Saussure and also uh, Charles Pierce. Roland Barthes will be another key theorist for structuralism and we will also consider um, Cla Claude Levi Strauss and his mythologies. Structuralism is a critical movement of the mid 20th century. It was based on the linguistic theories of uh, Ferdinand the Saussure and held that language is a self-contained system of science. It, wa it was also based on the cultural theories of Claude Lévi-Strauss who held that cultures like languages could be viewed as systems of science and could be analyzed in terms of the structural relations among the elements. Structuralism in the 70s was an important phenomenon because of the publication of a number of influential expository works by American academics including Frederick Jameson's Prison House of Language and Jonathan Culler's Structuralist Poetics and Saussure. Structuralism helped to eliminate any sense in which literature operated outside or apart from culture by stressing the implication of literature and other cultural practices in an elaborate network of science. This also led to the undermining of the artist or the author, hence Rolla Barthes now famous claim that the author was dead. At this point, I would uh, draw your attention to an assignment which you should be submitting by the deadline. Question 1. Who are the main characters in Plato's Iron? Remember for this assignment you will have to do some reading of your own and this has to be submitted uh, according to the date uh, given. So, uh, please stick to the deadline. So, who are the main characters in Plato's Iron? Second question, name any th three books on and about archetypal criticism. Third, who are the major writers of the aesthetic movement in Europe? 
And the last question, who is the author of S by Z? Our next topic would be reader response criticism. This is a critical method that examines the reader and the act of reading rather than the text being read. So, remember and note the important phrase, the act of reading. The reader response uh, approach evolved out of phenomenological and interpretive analysis and is closely associated to reception theory. Some of the key writers of reader response theory are um, Husserl, Haas, Wolfgang Iser and Stanley Fish. We will also look at the concept of interpretive communities and Fish is famous, is there a text in this class. Our next topic would be semiotics. Now, what is semiotics? We are surrounded with semiotics which is nothing but the study of science. So, semiology was defined by one of its founders, the Swiss linguist Ferdinand de Saussure um, as the study of the life of science within society. The idea of semiotics as an interdisciplinary mode for examining phenomena in different fields emerged in the late 19th and the early 20th centuries with the independent works of uh, Saucer and of the American philosopher and writer Charles Sanders Peirce. Peirce defined a sign as something which stands to somebody for something. And one of his major contributions to semiotics was the categorization of signs into three main types, an icon, an index and a symbol. Modern semioticians have applied Pierce's and Saucer's principles to several fields including aesthetics, anthropology, communications and psychology and our endeavor would be to attain or to gain an overview of this. The most significant names associated uh, with the theory of semiotics are Claude Lévi-Strauss, Jacques Lacan, Jacques Derrida, Michel Foucault, Roland Barthes and Julia Kristeva. We will also look at Umberto Eco and his A Theory of Semiotics. The next area of discussion would be film theory. Uh, I am sure all of us here are uh, interested in watching films, but for in this course you will understand not just uh, what movies to watch, but also how to appreciate films. So, uh, the notion of film theory started in the um, mid 1950s. Of course, there were attempts to theorize cinema even before that, but from the mid 50s onwards, it began uh, to be taken very seriously and it started with the work of uh, the Kayudu cinema writers who propounded the notion of film authorship. In 1948, um, a French writer Alexandre Astru published an essay in Ecro Francais um, entitled La Camera Stilo which is the camera as a pen. So, therefore, the idea of the writer uh, or sorry, the idea of the director as an author and therefore, we get something called the author theory and this was author theory in France. Later in America, it was popularized uh, particularly due to the efforts made by someone called Andrew Serres. We will also look at cinema and modernism and uh, as we know modernism deals with the questions of aesthetics and art and attempts to steer clear of uh, the constraints or very similitude of realism. So, this will be discussed in detail in this uh, in the course uh, in the lectures on film theory and uh, we will also look at the American avant-garde cinema of the 1960s to the mid 70s. 
some major international film movements will also be given attention. For example, the French New Wave and Italian Neorealism will also understand what was meant by German Expressionism. We will continue with this lecture in our next class.